Good evening and welcome to this year's last, the last meeting of the year. It's December 11, 6 p.m. meeting. Um, let's get started. Can we start? Roll call. Item one is roll call. Commissioner Gonzalez. Here. Commissioner Yakubian. Here. Commissioner Markarian. Here. Chairperson Kirkchan. Here. Item uh, 1A is flag salute. That's fine with flag salute. Item number two, please. Item two is posting of the agenda, the agenda for the Monday, December 11, 2017 special meeting of the Glendale Transportation and Parking Commission was posted by Friday, December 8, 2017 before 5 p.m. on the bulletin board outside of City Hall. Thank you. Uh, number three. Item three is oral communication. Discussion is not limited to items not part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. The commission may question the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. Okay, Mr. Golanian. Good evening, members of the commission. Mr. Chairperson, um, wanted to formally introduce to you, to the commission and the public, Edward Heady, Assistant Director of Public Works, who will be replacing me on the dais starting tonight. Um, Edward comes to us with a, a slew of experience in both the public and private sector. He's a registered professional engineer in the state of California, and we're happy to have him on board. Uh, I, I believe, I'm confident that he'll be of great service to the commission. Just wanted to add that um, it's been an honor and a pleasure working with the commission over the last three, four years. I'm not going anywhere, so I'm just a phone call or an email away. Just in case you, you would like some advice or have any questions, always available. Great. Thank you. Mr. Golanian, it's been a pleasure for us to work with you as well and your leadership over here. We learned a lot from you. At least I can speak for myself. And uh, we have to trust in, uh, in Ed right now to fill in some big shoes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and unfortunately, I, I just found out today that Commissioner Sahakian resigned. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, um, Commissioner Sahakian um, turned in his resignation last week to the mayor, uh, Vartan Garpetian, and uh, Mr. Garpetian is working on a replacement for him. He was a great asset for us, very knowledgeable. Yes, indeed. Uh, engineer. Yes. Uh, we oftentimes, I, I personally contact him for advice as far as whereabouts and what technology, and he was always ahead of everybody. Yeah. He has a new position, the city of Los Angeles, that keeps him very, very busy. So it was just the timing. Well, we certainly miss him. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Okay. Item number four. Um, Item four is selection of a new chairperson for the Transportation and Parking Commission for one year. Edward Heady will be presenting this item. Thank you. Um, good evening tonight, and uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to serve you and serve the city of uh, Glendale. Uh, as you know, the staff is requesting tonight a motion uh, from the commissioners to, for the selection of a new chair. As you know, that position is uh, served uh, under capacity for one year. Um, and. Um, with the expectation to uh, attend uh, all the meetings. Um, that, that selection will be up to you among the four of the commissioners and, um, and the staff is asking, asking for a motion and, um, and uh, asking somebody to move for that motion. Do I have a nomination for us? I second the motion. Okay, uh, let's have a roll call. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'll accept, thank you very much. Okay. Well, we have all the faith in, in Maro. <laughs> when I joined the commission, she was the chairperson and she, I was watching her, actually I used to sit here and watch Maro 
Bubbly Mara doing her thing. Bubbly Mara, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yep, I accept. Commissioner Gonzalez? Yes. Commissioner Markarian? Yes. Commissioner Yakubian? Yes. Chairperson Kirkchan? Yes. You can switch seats. Congratulations, no, you can switch seats, please. Thank you very much, fellow commissioners and Commissioner Kirkchen, for your previous year of service as chairman. Uh, we went through a lot of stuff this past year. Yes. And I'm certain that uh, the work and focus on the issues facing the TPC will continue. So uh, let's get started here. Uh, next item, please. Okay. Item five is information only, is the presentation of the Doran Street Agrade Crossing Separation Project and Improvements presented by some Metro representatives. Thank you. Uh, before you tonight, you have a, one representative from Metro and two from the consultant HNTB. We started with the, uh, Kuni Oginidi. He's uh, with, the, with Metro, and we have the, both consultants, Patrick Somerville and Tanya Brick in the audience, as well as we have our traffic engineer for any question or comments that you may have. The presentation is a PowerPoint presentation, will consist of going through a brief description of the project, um, the proposed work, the site location, the scheduling, the budgeting, as well as the next step and, uh, and the phases. So, and uh, from here I'll go ahead and leave the floor to Mr. Uh, O'Keefe, please. And I'm sorry to interrupt. Can I get your last name? I wasn't quite sure. It's, uh, My name is Kole Ogunrede. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Chairperson Yakobian and members of the commission. Um, as I said, my name is Kunle Ogunrede. I'm a senior transportation planning manager with LA Metro. And my colleague, Brand Baldomar Rama, who is the project manager, unfortunately had a knee accident uh, a few days ago, so he's not able to make it today. But myself and Pat Somerville, the HNTB consultant, will be more than happy to answer any of your questions. I will run through the presentation with, uh, with Pat. And thank you for the opportunity to update the commission on this very important project. So I have uh, PowerPoint slides. So today we'll have uh, about nine items to talk about. The agenda involves a purpose and project overview. Uh, the great separation, we'll talk about that. The community outreach efforts, and we'll also go into a traffic report update. We'll talk about the interim condition at Doran Street and the Broadway Brazil traffic signal, the active transportation elements within the project corridor, our schedule and the next steps, and we'll close out with questions. So the purpose of the project is safety. Uh, we cannot overemphasize that. Um, our plan is to improve mobility and access within the project limits. And you are probably all aware that in January 2017, the Metro Board approved an alternative that allows a northerly point of access. That's where you have uh, the West San Fernando Road going underneath the 134 freeway and joining up with the Fairmont connector as well as the Salem Sperry overpass, which is very close to the Broadway Brazil intersection. For the northerly points of access, we have a rendering here to show uh, a configuration that the city of Glendale, we work very closely with the, uh, the staff of the public works department to get this uh, approved. So the city of Glendale has selected this configuration the good thing about this configuration is it avoids impacts to uh, the Glendale Water and Power Facility. This is, a con this is uh, where we have the West San Fernando Road go underneath the 134 freeway and we gradually rise and join up with the Fairmont connector. And uh, just south of, um, the the, um, south of the project limits, we have uh, an overpass that 
prevents, that makes sure we have unimpeded access over the railroad corridor. This is at the Salence Sperry overpass. And once again, this is a, this is a rendering, a conceptual rendering of um, the way the final configuration should look. We have been uh, actively involved in community outreach efforts within the, within the project limits and actually try to expand it to uh, connect with some of the businesses and residents. We've had several uh, meetings on this project. The most recent we had was on October 4th of 2017. And last year, we had a meeting in December 2016. At uh, October 4th meeting, we got many questions from the community, and we've been working closely with the Public Works Department and uh, our consultant team to address um, three major items here. Uh, first was um, the northerly point of access and its effects on the Fairmont traffic, uh, as well as the volume of traffic and operation of the Salem Sperry overpass, as well as concerns over the one-way operation of the interim condition at Doran Street. And then I'll get into uh, the preliminary traffic reports addendum. We have made um, modifications and updates to the original traffic report. And what we have now shown is um, an addendum to the traffic report where we have updated the traffic report with 2040 volumes that uh, were developed with um, some of the traffic counts when our field team went out uh, in May 2016. And this, um, the traffic counts and some of the updates to the traffic reports is consistent with some of the regional modeling. And um, some of the things we've also done, um, well, some of the results that came from that traffic report where we realized that the PM peak hour volumes were higher than the morning AM volumes. And the trucks were found to be less than 10% of the volumes, total volumes during the counts. Additionally, we evaluated um, the one-way interim condition for the traffic operations at Doran Street. And what we tried to do was look at how that affects the traffic at Broadway Brazil. And essentially, our analysis shows us that um, the one-way interim condition is not the most optimum. And we are going with a proposal for a two-way interim condition at Doran Street. What you see here is just, a, just an image of the existing conditions at Doran Street. Um, we have a two-way uh, traffic connection right now from West San Fernando Road all the way through past uh, San Fernando Road on Doran Street. And this was the interim condition for the one-way that I talked about earlier. Um, this was developed by um, the administrative law judge decision to create a one-way interim condition. It's westbound only, the one-way condition, westbound only. So it shows on here that it will eliminate the eastbound traffic movement. And consistent with what I said about the safety requirements for this project, we will be upgrading rail safety equipment and pedestrian facilities. And I'll move on to the next slide here. Well. Very, uh, we got some very good feedback from the community. We have worked very closely with uh, the Public Works Department here at Glendale. And one of the things we've received and the concerns that came from the community was um, for this one-way configuration, uh, there will be additional gridlock at Broadway Brazil. Uh, there will be a requirement for truck turnaround, as seen in this image there, a truck turnaround underneath the 134 freeway. And we received uh, overwhelming opposition from uh, the Atwater businesses. So taking all this uh, feedback into consideration, we went back to the drawing board and, and came up with this uh, two-way configuration. Uh, this two-way traffic configuration, the good thing about it is that it maintains what exists. Uh, it maintains the outbound movement, that's the eastbound movement. There will be no cul-de-sacs for trucks. It also enables that we will be able to um, 
get the city of Glendale to possibly apply for a, a quiet zone based on the improvements that we will make with this uh, two-way configuration. And then one of the things about this is uh, to note the ALJ decision, we would have to get a peti petition for a modification of the previous decision by the ALJ, the administrative law judge. Uh, this process takes about six to nine months and it will have its own outreach component, so things like a public notification through the CPUC, so working with the community. This here is a, is a rendering of the two-way improvements. It shows uh, some of the work that will be done at, uh, between West San Fernando Road and San Fernando Road on, on uh, Doran Street. And you can see all the, uh, the different pavement uh, shading. There's the darker shade, which shows most of the new work that will be done. So, City of Glendale was successful in uh, implementing quiet zones uh, at Sonora Avenue, Grand View Avenue, and Flower Street. And this really uh, sets uh, the stage for my next slide, <laughs> which talks about what, where we could be uh, going forward. Upon completion of this uh, proposed two-way interim condition at Doran Street and Broadway, Brazil, we could possibly get up to uh, two additional quiet zones because of the upgrades that we will implement there. Uh, the city of Glendale will be the lead agency and will have to submit an application to the FRA for approval. And here's the schedule for the interim condition only. Uh, this is what we look for through the, life, through the interim condition implementation. We will petition to the CPUC. That will be done in December. It's pretty much in the next two weeks here. And uh, we would also continue to work on the interim condition final design and make signal modifications to Brazil and Broadway. This will be done uh, by spring of 2018. And then we'll move on to the second phase of our project, uh, which will be the project bidding and contract award. We, uh, you know, there is gonna be a need for some funding to be determined on the future phases. Uh, the third phase is the interim condition construction. This would also require some um, fund funding to be determined. And finally, <coughs> on the quiet zone implementation, we would also be talking about some um, funding to be determined. Throughout all these processes will definitely be uh, involving the public. And um, this, um, the traffic signal operations at Broadway Brazil, we've definitely received a lot of comments about this. I know the community is concerned about traffic here. And this was raised at uh, December, December meeting. And we were looking to upgrading the signal at uh, Broadway Brazil. This will require software, software upgrade on the right turn signal phase added for the southbound San Fernando Road. We anticipate construction for this to start in the spring of 2018. It will be funded by Metro, and the city of Glendale will lead the construction efforts. But we, as always, work very closely with uh, the city of Glendale, and we have a good working relationship with the Public Works Department. On this point, I'll pass it over to Pat Somerville, our consultant, who will lead us through the active transportation for the Riverwalk Bridge. Good evening, I'm Pat Somerville, project manager for HNTB, consultant working for LA Metro on this project. As part of the grade separation, one of the important elements is safe passage of both pedestrians and cyclists through the proposed project. So there's several elements I'm gonna walk you through that are currently up for consideration, or still requires Metro Board approval, but are up for consideration as part of the project. Off of the north side of the project, as Kunle mentioned, was the northerly point of access, the connection of West San Fernando Road to Fairmont Avenue. 
As you may be aware, Fairmont Avenue has no provisions for both pedestrians or cyclists. So our new connection also will be void of facilities for those uh, pedestrians and cyclists. In lieu of that, what's being proposed is the extension of the Glendale Riverwalk Trail with the, with the addition of a bridge over the Verdugo Wash. This is consistent with the city's plan as part of phase three of the Riverwalk Trail to provide that bridge. It's also consistent with the city of LA's LA River revitalization. Both cities were looking for a bridge crossing. It's an important link for the pedestrian and cyclist mobility. So this is up for consideration. Um, it would connect where your confluence park is being planned, right? It's Verdugo Wash, LA River confluence. Span over the Verdugo Wash, and it would cross underneath uh, the 134 freeway and then connect at the cul-de-sac of Doran Street. So that would provide north-south movement for pedestrians and cyclists. The next element is at Doran Street in San Fernando Road. Through the life of the project, one of the comments that we continually were receiving, questions that we were receiving, was how does a pedestrian today, that's at the corner of Dorn and San Fernando Road, get across the railroad tracks once the grade separation is built and that grade crossing is closed? Where today they could walk 200 feet and be at the intersection of West San Fernando Road with the, cro with the closing of the crossing, it would be a mile up to Flower and back, or a mile south to the Salem's Ferry overpass and back. So what's also up for consideration is the addition of a pedestrian bridge at this intersection. This would have a ramp structure on either end on Doran Street, right near the 134 freeway on the right-hand side of this image. It would be a bridge structure that would span over San Fernando Road and the railroad, railroad corridor, and then a ramp structure back down currently where Doran Street is today over at West San Fernando Road. So this would provide the uh, access for pedestrians and cyclists to be able to cross as they would today. Instead of at grade, it would be a ramp with the bridge structure across. This connects to Doran, which also then provides connectivity to the Riverwalk Bridge that we just discussed, crossing Verdugo Wash, so it provides nice connectivity for the Glendale constituents. The third element as part of the project is that is on the Salem Sperry overpass. What's being proposed is a cycle track, a two-way bicycle facility along with pedestrians that is separated by a concrete barrier from traffic. It's very similar to what was recently opened in 2017 on Riverside Drive down near San Fernando Road, a little further to the south in the city of LA. Uh, this is an image of that uh, facility uh, where you can see the striped bicycle path and then a pedestrian path running adjacent to it in a concrete barrier. In that image, the cars are on the right-hand side of that barrier. So this again would provide the safe passage for pedestrians and cyclists separated by a concrete barrier from trucks and vehicles on the Salem Spray overpass and it would connect San Fernando Road to West San Fernando Road for the pedestrians and cyclists. So those are the three elements that are uh, up for consideration. Um, as you'll hear in the path board with the grade separation going to the Metro Board for approval for its inclusion in the project. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Kunle. Oh, before I go forward, I noticed a, a slight error on one of the slides. I just want to correct that. So um, the first uh, bullet says uh, community concerns at uh, December 7th. It's actually 2016, yeah. so I just wanted to note that. So that was last year. So we'll correct that and keep it in the file for you. So this is the schedule for the great separation. We've completed the alternative analysis, the first phase. We. Uh, in the process right now of moving into the environmental clearance, the preliminary engineering, that will be completed in the fall of 2018. The third phase is the, uh, the PSNE, the plan, specs, and estimates, which will be completed in fall 2019. And we are currently working on funding to uh, complete this project. That will complete out of, uh, the fourth phase of the right of way and construction phase. And once again, we stay involved with the community throughout all these phases. 
uh, the, the project funding, we have a project budget of about 150 million. The final design is uh, completely funded through uh, Measure R, 3%, that's the 6.6 .6 million, so we're funded through final design. As of now, we are working with the California High Speed Rail Authority uh, to, um, to get the approval on the 50% committed to the project. So that will be of the project cost up to 74 million. And finally, we are working on getting additional uh, potential funding sources like the CPUC Section 190, the Federal Fast Lane Grants, SB1, and uh, also the California Freight Investment Program. Move on to the next slide. Our next steps. So LA Metro will submit a petition to modify the CPUC, modify from a one-way to a two-way to the CPUC in December 2017. And the CPUC has their own separate review and public notification process. And this, like I said, would take about six to nine months. And we, uh, the next step also includes uh, getting active transportation elements approved by the Metro Board in early 2018. We would also commence the environmental clearance and preliminary engineering of the great separation and we plan to uh, start to finalize the plans for the traffic signal modifications in December of this year. And we'll work on a very important uh, aspect of this project to initiate and prepare the co-op agreements with the city of Glendale and, and LA in early 2018. And that's, uh, you know, the last uh, bullet from the previous slide really sets up the discussion on the ownership and maintenance We've uh, had very uh, extensive conversations and discussions with the cities of Glendale and LA about ownership and maintenance of the improvements. And uh, the cities of Glendale and LA will own and maintain the improvements being proposed as part of this project, including the active transportation elements. On that note, uh, we are done with the presentation and we're here to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Ogorundi. I appreciate it. It was a wonderful presentation. And um, before I invite my fellow commissioners to uh, ask some questions, uh, just want to say right off the bat, uh, applaud Metro and uh, cherish the wonderful cooperation that Metro has uh, with the city of Glendale. Uh, and such wonderful projects just come out of this uh, beautiful collaboration. So. I want to thank uh, all of you and Mr. Summerfield as well um, for your presentation. Thank Are you. There any questions? I have a couple, please. Oh, I'm sorry. go ahead. No. Oh, I didn't see. Go ahead. Thank you. The completion date, well, it's somewhat dependent on the funding. So that's, um, we're still working on getting additional funding for the project. Um, do you have anything to add to that, Pat? I think that's pretty much it. It's, it's really dependent on the funding at this point. We also, something for later on to come as part of discussions or? Well, that will be covered through the environmental process and also the final design. And we are funded through the final design. So like, so all of that information will be at public meetings sure. through the final design process. So all of that will be addressed. already designed, addressed through the environmental process, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Also, thank you both for your presentation. Thank uh, you. A couple of questions, please. What do you say on uh, this one page that the project budget is 150 million and item number three indicates or reads no funding has been determined for construction, but then 3A says that there is at least 50% of, of the entire budget committed. So are you saying that uh, it's committed but 
no fund should it say no funding has been determined for the complete construction, but some of the 74 million goes to construction, uh, design and construction, correct? Yeah, that, that 74 million will go towards construction. Right. And I think maybe we need to rephrase that, but uh, yes, some of it, well, the 74 million will go towards construction because right. we're funded it through. It just seems a little uh, uh, contradictory or something yeah. there. Yeah, we'll, we should rephrase that. So, so we, we have, the project has committed already basically 50% of the project budget, and that includes design and construction, the 150? So I think the, the goal of the third um, bullet there mm -hmm. was to really emphasize the California high-speed rail component, right. which is 50% uh, of the project cost up to 74 million. We are working with the California High-Speed Rail Authority to get uh, that commitment approved. That takes a, a process. So that's really what we're trying to say there. But yes, maybe we could rephrase that and uh, make it clearer. Committed sounds to me like it's funded. I, I agree. Okay. I think it's a, it's a Nomen language nomenclature. nomenclature. Okay. But yes, I agree with you. Thank I think we will <laughs> so rephrase we, that. We need to raise another $76 million. Actually, more than that. But more than that, because what we have right now is the 6.6 .6 million for the for the final design, right? And uh, and then we're we've talked about other funding sources like the federal fast lane and the SB1, right. but the high speed rail component is up to 74 million will be committed to the project. So cost up to that amount. Yes, I up see. to that amount. Okay. Uh, the second question, please. Can you go to the last visual that you showed there? Um, the one that show yes, mm -hmm. uh, are we? Are, is there a need to acquire any land? Where is the entitlement relative to the land on all of this construction? The right of way acquisitions on this. Mm -hmm. I, this is better served by by Patrick. <laughs> is that is that is, is there a purchasing of within the 150 or beyond that? It's inside the 150 million dollar budget that's currently established for the project. It's, uh, and includes is this public, right of way acquisition. Public and private acquisitions. Correct. The city of Glendale part of that? The, I'm just looking through the um, two alternatives. Um, the North Lily Point of Connection um, does affect city of Glendale owned properties underneath Fairmont Avenue uh, before it enters the LA County Flood Control and Army Corps jurisdiction. Uh, we'd be working through with the city in terms of impacts to street right-of-ways along uh, Wilson and, and Salem as well. And then for the bridge access and things like that, are there purchase of lands also? Yes, there is. But all that is in the $150 million. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. And, and who did the estimate for all that? I was curious. LA, LA Metro. LA Metro, okay. So the last question I have is um, I see some green on these two being depicted. And then on the others where we have uh, bicycle and pedestrians, I didn't notice any uh, landscaping or anything where, let's say, people do the walking and they want to take a break and have a bench or something to sit. Is there any? And there also seems to be in some of these visuals the first appearance of some green areas. Are, are there potential parks there? Or what? what is the uh, overall plan relative to uh, mitigating some of this uh, obviously needed engineering with some other uh, nature or landscaping or places for people to take respites. Those are, those are elements to be determined uh, as the project moves forward. Uh, what you're seeing here in the imagery is, is you'd refer to as excess lands as that were, had to be acquired to build the project. Mm -hmm. um, the use of those lands post project is yet to be determined. Uh, but those are all opportunities, as you said, um, whether it's a park, whether it's walking paths, whether it's able to be repurposed, used as a parking lot, there's other opportunities out there. So has there been any landscape architects commissioned as part of the design team? There is a landscape architect on our team um, that will, as this project now does start moving forward, will start developing those types of concepts as well as the aesthetics of the bridges. Um, that's another important element that will come forward in the next phase of work. So the last question I have, and thank you for your responses, on the, uh, the walkability and the bicycle visual in plan view, 
I notice where you have the ramps, there seems to be some uh, residual properties there that might be enhanced for mini parks and things. Is, is that something that's being looked at? The uh, ramp structure up at Dorn in San Fernando Road? I believe, I'd have to go back to see, but there are a couple of places where, back to that. Uh, like see there's parking areas right there, I guess those are parking, I don't know what those are, but there's there on that one, and then there's another one at the other um, pedestrian one. In, we, in this at image, Doran, I think. Yeah, at this in this image uh, where say, where the overpass connects back to San Fernando Road, some of that green area you see is actually in private property. It's the restoration of parking um, where Hub Electric is. I see. Um, similarly, on the opposite side for that that adjacent business. The areas that you see kind of here in brown is the area that you're seeing in green in the image in the, in the photo simulation. It's those similar areas. Um, again, those are the areas that are open for discussion as to what they want to be post-project. So when you say post-project, so those improvements would not be in the $150 million. There is an allowance in there to do something with the lands, whether it's uh, part of the project or sold a surplus. Uh, there's... Uh, there's, uh, there's several opportunities that will be vetted as the project moves forward. And thank you for putting this one up. This shows me uh, potential mini park areas or something for the public to sit and... Yeah, this, one, uh, this one is uh, located partially within Caltrans right-of-way. This would I be see. into the slope area. Oh, uh, I see. Part of it is within the, the existing sidewalk area on Doran Street today. Oh, okay. I see. Um, and partially into the Caltrans right-of-way into the slope. Um, again, um, this is an initial concept uh, that will be refined as the project moves forward. We have to have discussions with Caltrans as well um, and figure out the best configuration for this. Mm -hmm. so, so the last comment I would make, not a question but a recommendation or a suggestion for a recommendation that the earlier I think you bring in other um, disciplines that are responsible for the design of people places in addition to uh, what's been successfully worked out here I think would come a long way instead of just adding it at the end so that it's a collaborative effort between the engineering teams and the landscape architects and others who are responsible for for people places agreed agreed we'll keep that comment for these projects and also our subsequent projects thank you thank you um, now this visual here uh, the ramp but will that also accommodate the slope for handicaps, for handicap, or is it only for bicycles? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next visual, the one uh, that was at right after. Now, the parking spaces, are these going to be for use of just anyone, neighbors, or uh, what's, who's going to benefit from these parking on both sides in L.A. and in, and in Glendale? Yeah, the, uh, the parking stalls that are shown in this exhibit are restoration of parking, off-site parking for the current businesses that exist there today. Um, on the Glendale side, there's two parcels there where this Salem Sperry overpass would affect their current parking. Okay. So what's being reflected here is a reconfiguration to restore as much parking as possible to avoid the impact that's happening with the overpass. Is there a covenant uh, between Metros and City of Glendale and those property owners that runs with the land? The, the, as part of the project, the lands would have to be acquired for the overpass to, be, to develop the street right of way. No, I'm talking about the parking, where the parking stall is going to be allocated for the businesses. This, uh, are there going to be covenant that's allocating those parking spaces to those property owners? Or designating them. This, to these property. parking, the parking shown here, is all private. It's not in the, not inside the public right away. It would all be private parking. Privately owned. Privately owned, because it's, it's again, it's the restoration of parking that's being affected by the project itself, not on street parking, but off, off street parking. So, there's no public parking on the, over there. Not on the overpass, no. Okay, now. Uh, next question, this project being on going through two cities, L.A. and Glendale, and uh, bridges known to be magnets for homelessness, uh, we don't want cities to point fingers at each other at who's responsible to maintain that. Are there any mitigation for them to detract homelessness 
to occupy the, uh, these bridges? It's one of the, I would say that's one of those items that uh, requires further analysis as we move forward. Um, there's a number of projects we're currently involved in that are looking at, you know, have to look at deterrence. Um, and there's, there's design features that we can include, uh, but I, we're not to that level of detail yet, but uh, everyone's very cognizant of it. Okay. Well, this, uh, uh, this is going to be a sort of a predominant bridge and overpass, and we don't want that to be uh, sort of a magnet, as I said, for homelessness. And furthermore, uh, during construction of these projects, uh, do we have any uh, plan as far as how to deal with traffic during constructions, how to move traffic during construction, including trucks? If I may, Chairperson Yakubian, congratulations. Uh, Commissioner Kirkchian, to answer your previous question, on um, facilities that we have joint jurisdiction with City of Los Angeles, City of Glendale will take the lead and will get reimbursed for the cost of the maintenance and upkeep and enforcement and po uh, policing of those facilities. Okay, good. Thank you. So to answer the follow-up question on the traffic during construction, um, as again, as the project moves forward, um, a traffic management plan will be prepared which will evaluate uh, the impacts to traffic during construction. Um, I, what I would say though, between these, with these two elements, that northerly point of connection will not affect existing traffic patterns uh, because it is off the current paths of, of travel um, other than the connection up to Fairmont. Um, the Salem Sperry overpass um, will have minimal impacts. There will be no full shutdown or closures of San Fernando Road in order to build this. The two at-grade crossings will remain open while the, during the construction. So um, <coughs> for a grade separation project, it does appear that the, the traffic impacts during construction will be minimized uh, because of the current configuration and geometry of the project. Will there be impacts? Certainly, but it will be minimized and it will be evaluated and determined um, through the traffic management plan that will be uh, prepared during the final design. Uh, last question. Uh, we said we applied for uh, noise reduction for those few, sta uh, few stops at Sonora and, uh, and Doran and with the four, uh, four, four intersections. Now, when the high-speed rail comes, that's not, that's noisy. How are we going to mit mitigate that? When high-speed rail comes, how yes. are we going to mitigate? The noise problem, noise issue. Well, um, well, uh, I mean, we, I think definitely one of the things we'll have to do um, is um, work with high speed rail to look at the entire corridor and look at ways of maybe um, looking at additional uh, maybe grid separations or other quiet zones within this, within this area. Well, I don't know much about, you're talking about the particular vehicles for high speed rail, that they're noisier? Yes. Is that? I mean, they'll be traveling naturally at very high speeds. I, you know, I will not go on the record for the high-speed rail because I know they've not procured their vehicles yet. Um, I do, I, as an engineer, I'll, just speaking from my experience, I am of the opinion that, uh, and I, once again, I'm not speaking for high-speed rail, I'm of the opinion that some of those vehicles, uh, some of the future, tech, some of the newer technologies, that um, there's a lot of um, more dampening of the noise as opposed to the current diesel locomotives that you see now. So once again, I can't speak for high speed rail, but I, I do think some of those um, vehicles may be quieter, even though they're going at higher speeds. Just my, my opinion. Right. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for the, uh, again, for the presentation. Uh, I guess that was one of I was reading it as the interim conditions and the quiet zone. I guess now that I'm fully understanding this, that's going to be a temporary implementation as this project is going through. And then, I mean, I was there for the opening of the, the Fairmont, excuse me, the um, Grandview uh, and Sonora Flower uh, to much great, um, you know, happiness to the residents uh, there. So when I saw quiet zone, I immediately uh, you know, was very happy for those residents because this is a, this is a big project. Um, it's going to take a toll on the 
on the residents and their patients. I'm very happy to see um, the uh, collaboration and the willingness to communicate uh, with our Glendale residents who are, um, you know, that's where the power of the city comes from, is from their, their vocalness um, and they're willing to uh, communicate their concerns. Um, my question is, during the construction project or construction phase of this, uh, will there be any um, attention uh, maybe brought to, I mean, in terms of prioritization, say working on the Riverwalk uh, project initially to get that completed before the um, extension kind of works? And my point being, will there be an effort to accommodate or address the needs of the pedestrians and the bicyclists? Get, or does it happen simultaneously? Is that kind of how, how does that, how will that all work? Yeah, I think um, that will probably be more on the construction phasing of the right. project. And um, some of the details would obviously be worked through as we go through the environmental process and the final design. I will say one thing though, I think Pat is better suited to answer this question because he's actually going to be <laughs> working on the construction phasing. Uh, I, 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 want, I want to make sure we give you as much information as we can now. So I think Pat, I'll let you answer that. Um, the, the different components of the project could be phased accordingly um, from a constructability standpoint because a contractor has to get into the Verdugo wash to build both the pedestrian bridge as well as the northerly point of access. He's going to want to do that once. Right. And so he's going to want to build the foundations for both of the bridges at the same time. And he's got a very limited window to be inside of the river, um, inside of the wash to do that work. Um, so the initial thought is they would be built simultaneously, um, though that could still be evaluated looking at overall schedule and durations in order to build the project. Um, but it is, as Kunle said, one of those elements going forward that you start refining the, the construction scheduling and the sequencing. Okay, that's, that's good to know. And there'll be more, um, will there be more community outreach at this point? Or are we done with community outreach? Oh, it's through the life of the project. We, the we will oh, have community know. outreach okay. through the final design, the environmental process, Perfect. and through construction, okay. yes. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Are we good? Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And the next item. Item six is commission staff comments and updates. Who would like to start? I don't have any updates. I just would like to request, uh, what is the calendar dates for 2018 for commission meetings? Do we have any mm -hmm. feel for that that we can put into our calendars? Next potential meeting would be um, February 26th. Thank you. And I'm sorry, Mr. Heedy, let me, sure. it's Heedy, is, am I correct? Correct. Healy, am I, my hearing's going correct. out Correct, he H-I-T-T-I. Okay. Um, do you have any updates from the staff before the commissioners? Um, not, not at this moment. The only um, update we may have will be having Nick coming up soon. Um, if you recall, at the last meeting, uh, there's some discussion or concern about speeding on Virginia mm -hmm. by the school. If you recall, a resident came here and, and made some comments. The staff looked into that segment of the street, and uh, it's going to come up as a, a long-term um, mitigation measures for, to minimize or control the speeding with the upcoming street resurfacing will be even though that will be in spring 2018. But the, in the interim, the staff look into uh, make some uh, improvement or mitigation measures such as striping and uh, mark uh, the plans that will be eventually constructed as a permanent structure such as the realigning the street with the 90 degree intersection with the curb and gutter. So you'll be seeing next, uh, it's gonna be done during the school, when the school is out, a resident will be notified as well at the school to put like those stick candlesticks, kind of uh, to mark the future upcoming street improvement. 
and that what it tells you, give you the configuration, new configuration of the street of the intersection, uh, give the, the impression of narrowing this lane, because this, this street really, it's in the school zone, but you drive there, you can even see one sign tell you it's a school. So there's, uh, even though the locals will know the school is there, but for an outsider or somebody made a wrong turn and speed up on that street, may not realize it's, or it's really you're in school zone. So there's a lot of features, the combination of striping, proper signage, uh, realigning the street, that will help to mitigate that measure and we'll monitor, see as a pilot study, if that will work, we can implement it even around the parks. And that's what you're gonna see, hopefully you'll see at the next meeting, um, a revision to the uh, guidelines for a speed bump and uh, traffic calming measures. Uh, you will see some proposed uh, feature and measures for the, uh, those will be special criteria for street near those facilities school as well as parks that could be, may not be, will not be implemented on other residential area, will be have different criteria, but those kind of very high, you know, highlight elements that of, of the city where we see most of the speeding around those, those, those areas. So mm -hmm. you will see some proposed facilities for your consideration. That's all we have to, for update for now. Any other comments? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, is there any update on uh, the use of the uh, usage of the holiday shuttle? Uh, that's, mm -hmm. I that was we, thinking about that too. Do we have any numbers or any critiques or comments from? Chairperson Yakugin, um, Commissioner, Commissioner Gonzalez, I don't have the numbers with me, unfortunately, or I, I can't speak to it off the top of my head, but by all accounts, it's been successful uh, since we have started the, the program. Um, there's um, also a, a video clip on, on the city's website that are, that's being played on mm -hmm. GTV6 as well. Um, I have uh, tried it, several of my colleagues, several of council members have tried it, and every time they have used it, the indications have been that it was um, popular and people were using it. Good. And it goes through into the ear? Or I mean January 15th. Oh, through mid-January. Oh. Yes. So we'll be able to see how it might be used when it's not a holiday season. Correct. The, the pluses and minuses Correct. of that. There are two of them? There are two of them, yes. Two of them, I yeah. see. Mm -hmm. Is there, have you guys seen any impact on Beeline and the usage of Beeline, the revenue or any of that? Um, not, not a significant impact. We have seen uh, the riders of um, varying demographics on, on these holiday trolleys, so. And the, the approximate hours and days of the week? Um, About, I mean. It's um, Monday to Saturday, I believe. Um, can you look that up? Uh, well, we can okay. send us a note on it or something. Or Pardon me? If you could send us a note on it or well, something. Absolutely. I, it absolutely. was in the newspaper maybe two or three weeks ago. Yeah, the news press didn't get the data quite Correct. accurate, so okay. <laughs> we'll inform you duly. And how far south? I know it goes way It's all the way to the Americana uh -huh. and all the way north to Mountain. To Mountain, yeah, yes. I've seen that. Thank you. Um, well, I'll just make a few comments uh, to kind of, I mean, I think that was on all our minds how the uh, trolley did. And then perhaps in a couple months, um, we'll get an idea from staff on how it did. And I'm glad to hear that the B line off the top of your head didn't necessarily suffer too much. Um, maybe there'll be some ideas on how we can make our B lines cuter or <laughs> more appealing or uh, whimsical. Um, which will be interesting. Um, so um, I would like to make some uh, comments and I'd like to maybe provide um, some thought for direction uh, for staff uh, for the upcoming year. Um, one is I'd like to see if we could get um, some information, uh, data analysis on the traffic um, the impact that the new buildings uh, that we have, uh, you know, on Brand in that area, 
Uh, how is it affecting the downtown traffic flow? Um, are we seeing you know, a great increase in traffic? Um, what are the observations that the city's making? I think enough time has passed. Um, Mr. Golanian, please interrupt I'm sorry. me. It's okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Chairperson Yakubian, on that topic, it's, it's a very timely uh, request and question. Uh, we are working with our community development department. They are in the process of finalizing uh, the South Glendale community plan. And as such, we'd like to um, do a joint effort and make traffic study within the downtown specific plan as part of that study. Um, so you, you'll see we'll something see in spring of 2018. Okay. We'll bring it to your commission first for uh, discussion and uh, recommendations before we take it to council. Very good, Mr. Galani, and you're on while top. I'm, <laughs> while I'm here, <laughs> um, I got the, uh, the uh, exact time and day of uh, holiday trolley, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday to Sunday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., and they stop every 20 minutes, all the way from Mountain to the Americana. 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Are there like regular stops yes. that they make on yes. every, okay. Yes, every 20 minutes they stop. No, not just 20 minutes. Let's say going from North Brand right. to South Brand, are there like, you know, stop yes. um, rest yes. Uh, stations? Yes. I haven't seen, okay. Yeah. There's signage that indicates signage. that, yeah, the holiday okay. trolley stops here. So, Mr. Golan, in, in just the idea that this is your last official kind of coming here, why don't you hang out at the podium there for one second while I go through my list of, of items you might be able to contribute to this. Um, you know, just understanding what the uh, parameters of this commission, uh, what they are and what it is we oversee and look at. Um, I'd like to see if we can get some information on the parking lots downtown. Some sort of a, um, an update on how are the parking lots faring? Um, are we seeing a lot of vacancy? Are we seeing improvements? Um, I see a lot of effort being put in by the city to um, bring people off of the main arteries and put them into city parking lots. So I'd like to see uh, if you guys have any, and I'd like to also see um, the rates. Are they appropriate right now? How is that working out? Chairperson Yakubian, <laughs> commissioners, another very timely request. Okay. <laughs> uh, as it happens, we are working on an RFP to select uh, parking consultants to um, conduct two studies, parking studies, one in downtown Glendale and one in the Montrose Shopping Park uh, area mm -hmm. uh, that will provide that information that you had just requested. That should be, we should be able to wrap that up in the summer of 2018. All right, that's, that's excellent. Um, and I think just kind of tagging on that whole trolley discussion, I think it's about time maybe the B-Line, uh, if I'm not mistaken, info, an update on how the B-Line is doing as a whole. When does the, st when does the city uh, look into the overall health? Um, I'm trying to recall the last B-Line uh, report, but evaluating the lines, the riderships, um, is that in the works too? Or maybe we can put that as an idea. Um, uh, do you recall the last time the report came out? It was before my time, yes. It was before your time, right? No. No? It was when I was just started commission, so probably four years ago. Four years? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the last item that I'd like to uh, comment on and um, actually get direction from staff is the, the legislation or the bill that's uh, AB 1069. You know, as part of our purview of the TPC, we oversee, um, you know, the, the licensing or the, the regulation of the taxi business in, in Glendale, um, that's a, a, whole new, a whole new law um, in the effort and the intent for those aren't, who aren't familiar with it. Uh, AB 1069 is uh, trying to uh, modernize the, you know, the regulations for taxis so that they can compete with these four higher transportation uh, companies. Um, very broadly speaking, in part of that effort, it involves uh, kind of taking out the municipalities uh, from their decision making and making it more either like a joint authority or actually under the state um, who's going to be controlled. So that's a big impact on uh, what we do as the TPC. 
Um, I'd like to know um, if the city has, uh, I'm sure you're aware of it and looked into it and how we plan to address it as a city and how the, what the role of the TPC will be in that going forward. Uh, Chairperson Yakubian, members of the commission, I am aware of the uh, legislation. I haven't uh, read it in detail. I don't believe uh, Ms. Yoon has either, but we'll be more than happy to bring a report back next time we meet. Yeah, I, I definitely think that's gonna be an issue that we're gonna have to, I mean, not just the city of Glendale, but all, all municipalities, maybe except for San Francisco, I think they're, they're in their own little world up yeah. there, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but I, that would be a good thing to look at, just so we're ahead of the game and uh, we can address this as it comes forward. But, um, that's all I have to say. Um, I would just like to make the last comment, uh, a much appreciation uh, to Commissioner Sahakian if he's out there in uh, TV land uh, listening. Um, much appreciated uh, his years of uh, service to the city of Glendale on this commission. Uh, there's no words that I can come up with right now to adequately express the invaluableness of his comments, insight, experience uh, to help this commission stay focused. Um, he was a straight shooter called a spade a spade. Uh, right now, I guess the city of Los Angeles really gets to enjoy his expertise, um, and I guess they really do need him now with all the, all the serious issues they're facing with the fires uh, and other emergencies. So uh, a personal thank you to Commissioner Sahakian, and uh, I look forward to Working with everyone and everyone who's come aboard uh, new, Ed, welcome aboard. Rubik, uh, we're gonna take you up on that offer of you're available any time for us. <laughs> and, um, and that's it. Do we have a, um, a motion to, or next, next <coughs> item, adjournment? Do we have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Seconded. Thank you.